Defilers of the Dead. Vicious Violators of the Innocent. The Fiendish Ghoul. Two of history's most diabolic demons. Selling cadavers and corpses to the sinister Dr. Knox for his forbidden experiment. from the bloodlust of these depraved grave robbers, these sadistic murderers. You killed me! upon shock, terror upon terror, shatter the screen in The Fiendish School. Take the luggage around the back, please, Robbie. Aye, miss. I will. All right, baby. I'll sit with you. 
Good evening. Dr. Mitchell. I hope you're better at diagnosing an illness than you are at recognizing a face. Martha. <laughs> oh, forgive me. You weren't expected until next week. I exercised a woman's privilege. I changed my mind. Woman, indeed. And yet, three years ago... Was I really so awful three years ago? Well, you were very young. I know one thing, Martha. You're very beautiful now. Thank you. How is the doctor? Oh, he doesn't change. Brilliant, aggressive, provocative, <laughs> verbose as ever. But even he will be at a loss for words when he sees his favorite niece. <laughs> Miracles, gentlemen, are an apology for ignorance and a retreat for fools. You, men of medicine, are the modern miracle makers. To primitive man, the human body was a miracle. To us, it is a structure of some 260 bones and attendant glands, muscles, blood vessels, nerves, organs, and tissues. A complicated structure, I grant you. But to us, no longer a miracle. And so today, some of you become doctors in your own right. Masters of anatomy. I congratulate you. You are entering the most honorable profession in the world. Sometimes too honorable. If half my colleagues pursued the study of disease, as strenuously as the honor of knighthood, the country would be a damn sight healthier place to live in. <laughs> but let me warn you, your studies do not end here. As long as you face the challenge of death, they never will end. Remember also that death is not only your enemy, it is your friend. Death is an incident producing clay. Use it, mold it, Learn from it. And finally, hearken to the words of Mr. Alexander Pope. Know first thyself, presume not God to scan. The proper study of mankind is man. Yes, gentlemen, man, alive or dead. Excuse me, sir. Yes, sir. May I speak to you, sir? Certainly. Thank you, sir. Well? I was hoping to have graduated this term, sir. Not more than I, Mr. Jackson. You'll tell me when I fail, won't you, sir? I try. I work harder than most. I try to please you. Please me, indeed. Do you consider yourself harshly treated? No, sir. Unjustly? No, sir. I will diagnose the cause of your failure, Jackson. You are far too emotional. Emotion is a drug that dulls the intellect. You must learn to approach the science of medicine with a more clinical mind. Confine yourself to the abstract. When you are capable of doing that, then you will graduate with honors. Yes, sir. Jackson? Sir? Are you short of money? Oh, sometimes it does get a bit difficult, sir, but I... I... asked for a statement, not a soliloquy. You can assist David to treat the, uh, subjects. You know what to do? Yes, sir. That'll put an extra guinea a month in your pocket. <laughs> Thank you, sir. That's very generous of you, sir. Ah, oh, Mitchell. Well, another 30 witch doctors let loose upon the unsuspecting populace. <laughs> Good heavens. Uh, Uncle. Oh, dear child. Mitchell, we must write and thank Madame Duclos for this, this miracle. I thought you didn't believe in them. Oh, I do now, from a gawky, long-legged schoolgirl to this. You look quite wonderful, my dear. A tribute to French cooking. I'm proud of you. Thank you. And I'm grateful to you for sending me to France. Mitchell, we must drink a toast to France. You're the man for a pretty speech. Oh, I can hardly compete with you, sir. Would you call my speeches pretty? Tell me, my dear, did you have a good journey? Wonderful. Comfortable? Excuse me, sir. There are two gentlemen here with stiff. I beg your pardon? With the subject, sir. Thank you. Yes, sir. Attend to this, will you? And don't wait for me. 
You tell him all about the broken heart you left behind you in Paris. Well, are you going to tell me about the broken heart? I trust your interest is purely academic. No. Oh, it's wonderful to be home. I hope you're not going to find Edinburgh dull after Paris. Should I? Oh, it needn't be. It can be the most romantic city in the world. Then it has secrets I'd never dreamed of. It has. And will you show me these secrets, Dr. Mitchell? Some of them. Nice and fresh, sir. Just a week in the grave. I'll give you five guineas. Oh, but five, I said. Well, Doctor, seeing you're such a good customer. Where will you gentlemen be celebrating tonight? Well, I, uh, I go to the Merry Duke, sir. Take this on account. Jackson? Jackson! When my housekeeper returns, you'll get her to change this. Go down to the tavern and give them the balance. David Jackson? Thank you kindly, sir. Think the medical council could do something about it, sir? In what way? So that academies could be supplied legally with bodies. They could petition Parliament. Oh, yes, Parliament. With 500 walking corpses there, you would think they could spare one. But a member for Edinburgh would do nicely. Easy now, Jackson. We don't want it to fall apart in the grind. No, sir. See them too, will I? Uh, they call themselves resurrectionists. I suppose they think it adds a classy tone to the profession, eh, Willie? It's disgusting. The place is going downhill when they serve the likes of them. Still, there's money in it, Willie. Do you mean to tell me you'd be after handling a broken down old corpse that's been in the earth for weeks for the sake of money? Ain't surprised on you. Ah, but the old woman keeps going on about money, Willie. Do you know what she was saying to me? Yeah? She was saying I should look for work. No. Ah, it's as true as I sit here. What? And you a landlord as well. Much obliged. You can stay a while or buy your drink. No, no, I'd better.
I'm still getting sober, dearie. Come on. Hey, come on. Here, give me a bath. Come on. <laughs> Here, get underneath the light. Let's have a look at you. Uh, it's not so bad. I'll soon fix that. Sit yourself down. Thanks for your trouble. Oh, it's the least I could do. You help me. Bring that chair over, will you? Look, there's no need to make all this fuss. No fuss. Have you been here before? No. No, I haven't. You're one of the medical students, aren't you? How did you know? Oh, oh, we get a lot of your type in here. Them and art students. They come to study the human form. That's anatomy, isn't it? Yes, but not quite as it's studied at the academy. I could teach them more than they learn at college. I think I could. I think I'd better go. Did those villains get your purse? No, no, it's still here. Good. I'd better go. Don't you like me? Yes, I do. Stay a wee while. No, I... When will I see you again? Oh, I'm here. All the time. I mean, really see you. Take you out or something. Oh. <laughs> Take me out? <laughs> well, that's a good one. <laughs> and what did your friends say if they saw you out with the likes of me? <laughs> Don't laugh, Mary. When? Tomorrow, maybe. Tomorrow. You'd better go. You're going to be late for your class. Good Lord, yes. Oh, Knox, I am. All right? Tomorrow.
Jamie? <laughs> what a lovely rosy apple, Jamie. Steve is your is the head. Did you hear that, Willie? Steve is your corner. Oh, boy. it's a great whip the boy has. Uh, get her the you know, Jamie. There's one thing you've got to learn. It's a hard life for an Egypt. <laughs> What is it, Jenny? It's gonna be it, you home. Something terrible's happened. Well, what is it? You see when you get home. Could it be that woman's broke her neck? Stop your whisper thinking, man. <laughs> oh, it's the grand clown yard, Willie. <laughs> old John. Just a handful of bones. Aye, that he was. Aye, it's no wonder he passed out on us. Can you hurry up and get him out now? I'll do what I can for you. <laughs> Aye. It makes the place look untidy. Guess the news, Willie. Surprise me. Old John's been and died on us. No. He must have passed away in the night without a word of warning. To hear that, Willie. The lodger's died owing me money. Three pounds it is. Now, what kind of a man is it would do a thing like that? Huh. Trust old John to take the easy way out. How's business? Very slack. I'm away for some help, Mrs. Burke. He'll be gone sooner than a dog can wag his tail. That'll be tomorrow. I don't know what the rest of my lodgers are going to say. Well, he's one less to worry about, the dirty old swindler. Oh, stop your moaning and go and put the bed to let sign out. What's for dinner? Kippers. I can make do with the ones we had yesterday. They're still repeating on me. If you'd earn a copper or two, you could have Finn and Haddock. Oh, there's one there in the cupboard, but I think it's gone off. So's poor Johnny. You know, Burke, I was thinking. It's a shame for Johnny to be going to a pauper's grave. On him we an unpaid debt on his day in conscience. Aye. Sure they put them things on very loose. What are you up to? Burke, could your missus go down to the pub and get a can of gin? And what do you think I'm going to use for money? Stop your clacking, woman. Have you no respect for the dead? Here. You're not so generous when it comes to paying your share of the house. There's your man money. here, says be up with you. Yeah. We could get six guineas for him up at the doctor's place and that'd wipe out the debt. Aye, and besides giving him his rightful chance of salvation. It's a great pleasure to be doing someone a kind service. If only he knew how happy he would be. And he got a mean old face. No wonder he died owing me money. Good evening. Good evening, Doctor. Out of this nettle rash danger, pluck this flower. Thank you, sir. Thank you for the flowers. I'm glad you like them. Why is he giving this party, Geoffrey? To launch you on Edinburgh society. The real reason. To collect his friends and enemies alike into one room and then insult them all indiscriminately. <laughs> I tell you, gentlemen, medicine is being driven underground. The law yields to us the body of a criminal when he is caught and hanged. Now, when? We have to wait a very long time for justice to unravel itself. Meanwhile, the Resurrectionist plies a very useful trade. Oh, really, Knox? You deny it? Well, uh, I agree you doctors need bodies for dissection. But to condone the violation of graves by these ghouls... I neither condone nor condemn. I accept. Is the feeding of worms more sacred than the pursuit of truth? I think the Reverend feels that to violate the grave is to violate the soul. I do. Oh, really? I am told that when the body is clay, the soul has already flown, one way or the other. Fortunately for the poor victims of these grave snatchers, that is true. The soul has left the body. Oh, of course. I was wondering why I'd never come across one in my work. Oh, no, Robert. Do <laughs> you deny that the soul exists? I deny nothing. I can show you the heart, my dear Reverend. Can you show me the soul? It is there. Where? Beneath the armpit, between the eyes, deep in the abdomen. The fact that you cannot see it does not prove its non-existence. After all, you can't see a thought. No, 
Do try having one without a brain. Oh, gentlemen, gentlemen. <laughs> the trouble with Knox is he's a teacher. Oh, I'm old-fashioned. You would have too much of anatomy. For me, a surgeon needs two things. A patient disposition and a pair of strong hands. <laughs> Admirable qualifications for a laborer building the Caledonian Canal. I suggest you're wasting your talents, Dr. Ferguson. I consider that an insult, sir. I complimented your strength. I no, no, think no, no. Gentlemen, gentlemen. Elliot, is it true what I hear? They say no matter what the complaint, you have but one prescription. Senapods. That's a libel. I know. A lawyer told me the story. You must sue him sometime. Excuse me. That man is doing the devil's work. Aye. He does it brilliantly. It's terrible creepy here, isn't it, Willie? Shh, shh, shh. I need you talking to me. Sure, he's the perfect specimen, Your Honor. Berg, stand aside so the gentleman can see our gentleman. Died only a few hours ago, Your Honor. We heard you like them fresh, sir. This one's as fresh as a new cut cabbage. Excellent. I'll give you seven guineas. Thank you kindly, Your Honor. Is this your normal line of business? Well, it's Mr. Burke here. Uh, he's by way of running a small lodging establishment, you see, and... Uh... I see. Mm -hmm. Put him in the brine, Davy. May the saints preserve, Your Honor. And may his soul rest in peace. Amen. This way. Come on, Willie. Uh, how do you do, Miss Knox? I'm well, thank you, Mr. Jackson. How do you do? Are you not going to introduce me to your friends? Yes. This is Mary Patterson. Mary, this is Miss Knox, and... How do you do? How do you do? This is Dr. Mitchell, one of our doctors. Oh, you're one of them, are you? How do you do? I'm very pleased to meet you. It's a lovely day. Oh, yes, yes, it is. Most unexpected for the time of the year. Oh, yeah, it's very much better than yesterday, don't you think? Is that your boat? It's a punt, Mary. It looks nice. I wish we had one, Chris. Well, why don't you borrow it for the afternoon? You'd be very welcome. Oh, what with Chris paddling, no fear. <laughs> I don't fancy walking here with wet drawers. I think we'd better go, Mary. Goodbye, Miss Knox. Goodbye, Mr. Jackson. Dr. Mitchell. Come on, Mary. <laughs> well. She's very pretty, isn't she? Yes, she's very pretty. I feel sorry for Jackson. Oh? Why? Oh, he tries so hard and he always fails. Well, it's not from lack of encouragement. The doctor's been very patient with him. He's been giving him extra coaching. But I'm afraid his mind's not on his work. Come to that, neither is mine. What's the matter, Mary? Well, you're ashamed to introduce me to your friends. Oh, they're not exactly friends, and I wasn't ashamed. I will. You looked it. Look, Mary. I'm proud of you. You know that. I'm the proudest man in the world. Oh, you need a woman about the place. I need you. <laughs> oh, Lisa. yes, Mary. I'm not a Lisa tonight. You. Tonight, tonight. I can't. I've got to work tonight. What? Tonight? Mmm. I've got papers to prepare for tomorrow's lecture. I thought perhaps we could go out for a wee drink somewhere. And then come back here. No.
Come on, Bert. <laughs> Bert, wake up, Bert. Set up straight, man. The money's gone. It's all gone. I ain't not a farthing left. Well, what were you doing, wasting half of it on the likes of her? That's your Aggie. It's what they call a capital investment. She's a what? That's a thing the businessmen talk about. Uh, poor old Aggie. Isn't she a sight to make your heart bleed? That's the drink has took hold of her. Come on, Aggie. Wake up, girl. You can't go sleeping here the night. Give me a hand, Bert. What have you in mind, boy? Well, the poor thing needs a decent bed. It's the least we can do for her. Come on, Aggie. Home with Mr. Burke here. The kindest landlord in the town. Do you know, Bert? There's no one here to see old Aggie go except us. Twelve o'clock, all's well. Twelve o'clock, all's well. Change our business. Who is am I? Oh, Aggie, you're among friends. Oh. Me and Burke here. <laughs> Aggie, me dear, you're in no condition to be walking abroad now. Burke, give Aggie a drink of the whiskey. Oh. Oh. Ask me, girl. I can see the bloom coming back to your cheeks all right. <laughs> Do as Willie says, woman. Let us know if you see anyone coming. Willie, I won't take a second. Now, Bert, you wouldn't want to be turning old Aggie out. Her feeling so weary. What do you have to say? What? Now, Aggie, you're not thinking our intentions are dishonorable. You're old enough to be my own mother. Rest her soul. Uh, you're a couple of kind-hearted boys. There's no many as kind to the old folk these days. I'm awful sleepy. That's right, Aggie. You have a rest. Have a good rest. Do you hear that, Bert? She wants a rest. Hardly whisper. Sure, the old girl's better off. She'd know where to go. That must be a terrible thing when you're old. She bit my hand, Willie. She bit it. Well, you can't blame her for that. Here. Put her in here. Hold her up nicely, Burke. Don't blame her for that. Filthy thing. 
A filthy, rotten thing. Ain't she a beauty, eh, Willie? Ain't she a beauty? <laughs> Six, seven, eight. You say you found her dead drunk in the street. But fresh as a herring, Your Honor. And already pickled, as you might say. <laughs> I prefer the subjects to be pickled externally. This one is liable to explode. However, her heart, I suppose. Uh, you're a great man to be doing business with, Doctor. Uh, do you take the snuff? Would you be wanting a more or less regular supply of uh, poor unfortunates like Aggie? There's always a big demand for subjects here. Uh, isn't, is, is, isn't the hundreds just like her in this old town? Nowhere to sleep and with the freezing cold. It, it's a wonder the whole place isn't littered with corpses. <coughs> good night, Doctor. Aye, good night to you, Doctor. Probably the best thing for her, eh, Davy? Aye. She was a fair age, sir. She'll serve a more useful purpose now than she did in life. See to her in the morning, will you? Aye, sir. And do you know what? A man could become a millionaire at this game. Do you think so, Willie? Aren't I telling you? And you know it gives a man pride, respect of himself to be doing a good job. Just think of it, Willie. Burke and Hare, members of the great medical profession. Draw your attention to the protuberance of the frontal lobe. This gentleman might have been a useful citizen, but he was hanged some 20 years ago for murdering his entire family. Mr. Jackson? Mr. Jackson? Yes, sir. Will you be kind enough to step onto the platform? Yes, sir. Now, sir, will you please explain to us how modern surgery might have saved this man from the gallows? Yes, sir. First, use the pointer, Mr. Jackson. We are waiting. Yes, sir. First, uh, uh, Please don't mumble, sir, and turn your head so the class can hear you. First, by removing the protuberance on the frontal lobe... Removing it? What are you proposing to do, scalp him? <laughs> I'm sorry, sir. You cannot enlighten us? No, sir. Were you not given a thesis to prepare on this subject, Mr. Jackson? Yes, sir, but you see... That will be all. Mr. Smedley. Proceed, Mr. Smedley. Modern surgery could have lifted part of the lobe approximately an eighth of an inch, so that the pressure would be taken off the brain. Very good. Continue, please. You're looking at me like that for? I was just looking. God! Where did you go? Oh, I went across the road for a wee drink. You know how it is. Yeah, I know how it is. Chris? Yeah? You know you asked me to think about... 
for marrying me. Well? No, Chris. Couldn't I make you happy, Mary? You see the way I am. Half of me wants to be with you, and the other half keeps tugging the other way. I'm not a good girl for you, Chris. I never was. I need to go out and laugh and have fun and maybe have a drink too much, you know? I don't want to make you miserable. Look, Mary, I know it's dull for you sitting about here, but I've got exams to pass. I'm going to be a doctor. I can know that. But I will try and take you out more. Honestly, I will. Will you, Chris? You promised me one thing. Stay away from that house. I'll try. Believe me, I'll try, Chris. Promise me. I promise. Good. And tomorrow night, I'll take you up <laughs> and set the town on fire. Oh, oh, let's not talk about fire, Chris. <laughs> <laughs> It's the real aristocrat here, Willie. That's the finest whiskey I ever seen in my life. That suits the colour of your eyes. <laughs> Bloodshot. Ah, keep a civil tongue in your head, woman. Is there nothing for me? <laughs> what do you want? Oh, I saw the bed to let notice. And if the bed's still vacant... Oh, don't stand there in the draught. Come in. Don't worry. You're with friends. That's more than welcome you are, and that's for truth, Eivor. Aye, that's the truth. As welcome as a golden guinea. <laughs> hey, would you, would you like a bite of something to sell? Helen, my darling, don't just stand there. Go and get the gentleman a plate of something. Oh, oh, you're very <laughs> kind. I'm a poor man, but I ain't won't be any bother. Oh, sure, you'll be no bother at all. Have you been long in Edinburgh? Oh, no, we just arrived the day. I'm down from Inveran. That's a warp in the Highlands, you kid. Is it now? Did you hear that, Burke? The gentleman's come all the way down from the Highlands. Aye. Uh, will you be wanting the bed for long? Ah, well, that's hard to see. I'm looking for work, you see. I see. Um, tell me, uh, would you take the snuff? Okay, thank you. Tell me, uh, Mr. Um... McLaren. Angus McLaren. Ah, we'll just call you Angus. Tell me, Angus, uh, have you, uh, have you got any friends in this town? Oh, no, I'm just a crofter. And there are hard times by. So I just thought to myself, it'd be nice to visit the capital and make a decent sum of money so as I could end my days in peace. Uh, isn't that what we all want? Just to end our days in peace. Uh. You've done business with us before, I gather. Oh, I saw that we have. With Dr. Knox. The doctor is occupied at the moment. I'll attend to you myself. I'm Dr. Mitchell. Well, open the box. Hey, sir. This man died only a few hours ago. Oh, aye, that's right, Doctor. You see, we got him quick before the parish undertaker could get his thieving hands on him. Where'd you get him? Well, you see, the poor old soul uh, was lodging at my colleague's house. Uh, that's Mr. Burke here. Uh, and he seemed to take ill, just old age, passing away in the night. How did he get that bruise? Bruise? Has he got a bruise? Well, look for yourself, man. Oh. Do, do you see that, Burke? He, he's got a bruise on the side of his head. Isn't that amazing? He, you know, I'm 
I'm glad you pointed that out, Doctor. I said, where did he get... I don't think there's any need to cross-examine our friends, Dr. Mitchell. We've had several fine specimens from these uh, gentlemen in the past. I was merely trying to establish the cause of death, sir. Don't tell me he was a patient of yours, Mitchell. Yes, I think eight guineas is the current market price, is it not? Eight guineas it is, sir. And as ever, sir, it's a pleasure to be doing business with a fine gentleman like yourself. I thought it says doctor. Show our friends out and then lock up, will you, David? Good night, dear doctor. Good night. Dr. Knox. Dr. Mitchell. Are you satisfied that subject died a natural death? Why do you ask? Those, uh, those two men. What do you know about them, sir? I know nothing, care less. And you'll continue to accept subjects from them without question? I will continue to teach anatomy, using the best specimens available to turn out doctors who will replace quacks. Is there anything else? No, sir. Then good night, Mitchell. Is Dr. Knox engaged? No wish to be disturbed. The doctor is busy now. We'd like to see him on an urgent matter. Will you kindly tell him? Come in, gentlemen. This is a great honor. Paul of Edinburgh's leading surgeons. Dear me. I hope you still consider it an honor when you've heard the purpose of our visit. Nothing could change my opinion of you, gentlemen. Proceed. An article by Dr. Knox. Page 13, but pray don't trouble to find the place, Dr. Elliot. I have an excellent memory. A few months ago, a man came to the Edinburgh Infirmary with an aneurysm connected with one of the larger arteries of the neck. Notwithstanding its obvious characteristics, even to the merest beginner, that it was an aneurysm, a certain distinguished surgeon pronounced it to be an abscess. Accordingly, this celebrity, who was once an amateur member of the ring, and who prides himself, among other things, upon the strength of his hands and arms, without pretension to head, plunged his knife into what he believed to be an abscess, and the patient died in a few seconds. Oh, the damned effrontery! How dare you! Dare? Is that a challenge? Why didn't you name the surgeon? Or you fond of a lawsuit? Well, since we all know your name and your reputation. You heard that, you gentlemen. You surprise me, Dr. Ferguson. I would have preferred to remain anonymous. I intend to sue you to the last penny in your possession. A most laudable enterprise. No doubt your preoccupation over a rich harvest will inspire a more adequate excuse for your next failure. Why, you? Why didn't you let him strike me? Or were you thinking he would have provided a more potent weapon in the law courts than a mere wrangle over an undisputed fact? I see before me four white, angry, baffled faces. Why? Because I have written an article? Because I have accused one of you of murder? My friends, go ahead. Take me to the high courts. And in the words of your puppet, sue me for every penny I possess. <laughs> A business-like venture. I wish you better success in the field of commerce than you have enjoyed in the sacred task of our profession. Is that all you have to say? No. I am aware that the path of truth was never strewn with roses. On every hand, one encounters a grey gauntlet of empty threats. To be condemned by ignorance is a compliment to knowledge. Croak your miserable way to the law courts, if you dare. I will meet you on the steps of the torch like the scot into your souls and leave them bare as a warning to your future victims. Now, if you will be so good as to incline your heads slightly to the right, you will observe the door. Please use it. Why do you...
deliberately insult them. Are you criticizing me? No, not criticizing. I wouldn't be so presumptuous. But I'm warning you. Those doctors will harm you if they can. How can they harm me? By making capital out of the merest whisper of gossip. Such as? An association with men like Burke and Hare. And who will listen to them? Am I to be as scared of expressing the truth as they are of hearing it? I tell you, Mitchell, it will take more than a handful of quacks to shake me. I am producing surgeons who will fight for humanity, not destroy it. And in the process of doing that, nothing, nothing will stand in my way. The individual is not important. What's it matter? Oh, I said I'd be home to meet Chris. Chris. Thank goodness. Ah, oh, oh, hello, Jimmy. Hello, Maggie. I got a new wee rhyme for you. Why? You stop your fidgeting me now. Ah, come on, what's your rhyme? What's your rhyme, Jimmy? It goes like this. <laughs> there are creepers and crawlers and six-legged bogus and things that go bump in the neck. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's very good, Jimmy. <laughs> Isn't that good? Aye, it's good. good. I'll give you a penny, huh? <laughs> if you can remember the rest of it. <laughs> oh, come on. <laughs> Let's go over to the house, Mary. <laughs> come on, there'll be free drinks over there. Oh, my God. You're dying, you're dying. Another time. Yeah. Get your coat, Mary. Get out of here. If you want a scene, I'll give it to you. You're drunk, Mary. Let me take you home. Well, let me take you home. <laughs> How do you hear that? <laughs> let me take you home, he said. Lord, <laughs> if you were half a man, you'd drag me out of here by the roots of my hair. But you just tried and I'll kill you. Go home yourself, Chris Jackson, and scratch a wah with your pen like a good boy so the doctor will be pleased with you in the morning. And don't keep a light burning for me, because I'll no be back. I'm not going to be bored anymore by your mealy mouth talk. <laughs> Come on. Is it now? Nothing. Give me a drink. Of course, me darling. <laughs> I'm a poor fool to be grieving for the likes of him. <laughs> Imagine me thinking I could make a man out of a ninny. <laughs> Plenty more of that where we're going. Why? Oh, where will that be? Tanner's close. Just the three of us. 
as cozy as three bugs in a rug. It's just around the corner. Just around the corner. <laughs> just around the corner. <laughs> just around no, the no, corner. No, 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 no. <laughs> Where's your wife? She's gone to see her twin sister. He'll wait here. Why, Willie? What for? Because I'm telling you. Oh. Uh, <laughs> don't make the place untidy, Willie. Together, Mary. Just the two of us. No. Give me love. I can give you money. The old woman's coming. Well, uh, let's get her. Hey. What's she doing here? She's dead. Did you touch her? Nobody touched her. Willie just killed her, that's all. Oh, that's all right. We don't want a thing like that in the house. She gets us a bad name. Look, me and Willie has work to do, so go to bed, woman. What, not lying there? Get rid of that first. Just look at the mess she's made in my bed anyway. She looks lovely, Willie. Aye. You know, I'm thinking the good doctor should give us a bit more this time. It is your friend. Death is an incident producing clay. Oh, you're a well careful, Mr. Jackson. Yes, Davy. This one's the best we've had so far. The doctor wants some drawings taken before we put her in the brine. Mold it. Learn it. Mold it.
checks. Well, what is it, then? Hey, what's the matter with you? Jackson! Mr. Jackson. What is the matter with Jackson? I. He was acting very strange. I can tell you why. Well? Burke and Hare have just brought in the body of a woman named Mary Patterson. She was Jackson's girl. I never thought to be off with you. You killed her. Now get back to where you come from. You <laughs> killed her. <laughs> you and your cutthroat friends. <laughs> you killed my Mary. <laughs> and took her to Dr. Lux. You killed me. <laughs> oh. Well, Borg. That's one subject we won't be selling to Dr. Knox. Good night, Mr. Hare. Good night to you, sir. Come on, me darling. Hey, you'll be as sober as a judge in the morning. What's the matter with your friend? It's fine. We'll see you later, Jamie. Oh, I may as well come along with you. Can I give you a hand? He does not look very it's well. All right. He's had too much to drink, that's all. I wish I could say the same for Miss Well, here. Mr. Hare, you've given me a golden guinea. Christopher Jackson. Are you quite sure, sir? Quite. You say he was stabbed? Yes, sir. He was found in an alleyway early this morning. Do you know of any reason why somebody should want to kill him? None. He was a quiet lad, hard working. I don't know about his personal life. Do you, Dr. Mitchell? I can't think why anybody should want to kill him. Well, thank you, gentlemen. I don't think I need to detain you any longer. Thank you, Inspector. Why didn't you convey your suspicions to the police? Did you want me to? And why not? You know what I fear, sir. An opportunity for your enemies to destroy you. Your consideration for me is very touching, Mitchell. However, if you seriously think that Burke and Hare were responsible for Jackson's murder, your duty as a citizen is obvious. Or if you really consider that the life of a street woman is more important than the advance of surgery, then stand in the market square and scream murder to the mob. I was thinking only of Jackson, sir. Hey, 
did you see that, Wally? Aye, the good doctor coming away from the police station. A lot of good that'll do the police. <laughs> <laughs> hey, what you're skulking there for, you daft loon? Did you get the drunk home safely? Aye. We got him home safely, Jamie. I was just asking. You see, I've done a terrible sin. Did you know? I, I found a man in the alleyway. He was dead. And what was the wicked thing you did then, Jamie? I, I stole a ring off his finger. And then, you know, I, I went to confession. And the priest said I, I should take it to the police. Now, what do you think about that? And did you take it to the police, Jamie? Not yet. You didn't, eh? Well, it's a wise boy you are, Jamie. Wise? Here, have you got it on you now, huh? No. Hey, and if you take my advice, you'll sell it. You see, the police might get to thinking that it was you that killed the man. Now, me and Mr. Burke here, we may be interested in buying it from you, seeing as we're in the trading business. Would you? Would you really? Wouldn't we, Wally? Aye, we would. So you run along and get it, Jamie. Shall I bring it here? No, bring it to the house tonight. Then we can have a wee drink just to celebrate the transaction. <laughs> There's no time like that night for talking business. <laughs> well, what do you think, Willie? I don't think he's half so daft as we thought he was. Jamie! Hello, Maggie. I've been searching everywhere for Mary. Have you not seen her? No, Maggie. I haven't seen Mary for nigh on two days now. I'm worried about her. What is? You were talking to her just now. Oh, I was... Oh, it's a secret, Maggie. Jamie. I have a confession to make. Oh? Today I overheard some of the students discussing the doctor. They were saying terrible things, Jeffrey. They were saying that the doctor is in particular how or where he procures bodies for dissection. This isn't true, is it, Jeffrey? Jeffrey, this isn't true. No, Mother. No. Good evening, Mitchell. Can we discuss tomorrow's lecture? And I trust you received my notes. Yes, sir. Our subject is the heart. Don't worry. Hello, Mr. Burke. Hello, Mr. Hare. Hello, hello. Hello, Mr. Burke. Are you there? Hello, Mr. Burke. Are you there? Mr. Hare? It's me, Jamie. Watch for anyone coming.
done. What's the matter, Helen? There's no more screaming. Uh, only the pigs. Get the box ready, Burke. Oh. Well, don't let's be forgetting the ring. That's what he come here for. Lady, I can't even make an accusation of murder against somebody without some proof of the fact. When you come to the house, you might find the evidence you're wanting. What's happened to Jimmy, Inspector? I wasn't oh, he's not right. I don't like this at all. No, 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 no. Right. Ward your hymns. There's no call to be greeting yet. But where are they? Oh, well, what do you mean? What do you think I mean? You can't come busting into decent people's homes like that. Where's Dob, Jamie? Uh, I don't know. I never saw him. I swear it, I never saw him, I tell you. And You're lying! No. He murdered Jamie! No, I didn't. It's not true. I tell it's not true. I tell it's not true. You don't see me! It's not true, I tell you! Stop it, will you? Stop it! You bless him that you are on Monday. Stop it, you so stop, stop it, will you? If you want to find them, go to the academy or Dr. Knox. Dr. Knox, in a few minutes, Burke and Hare will bring you another subject. I beg of you not to receive it. And why not? Because the police know it was murdered. A woman witnessed it. Is this what you mean? Yes. Was this young man well known? Everybody knew Daft Jamie. And a woman screamed to murder. Yet our friends Burke and Hare were not unduly perturbed when they brought him here. Because they know you have more to lose than they. They're relying on you to cover their traces. Are you accusing me of collusion with them? Dr. Knox, I don't know what to believe any longer. But I beg of you, for your own sake, dispose of the body before... You were saying? It's too late. Open the door, lady. My conscience is answerable only to me, Dr. Mitchell. Nothing is too late. I'm sorry to disturb you, Doctor, but uh, I've received some information from this woman. I have already been informed, Inspector. It was delivered a few minutes ago by two men of the name of Burke and Hare. Have you examined the body? You interrupted my intention, Inspector. Take a look now, Dr. Knox, if you please. Could you state the cause of death? Violence. Without any doubt. They've been murdering right under our noses. And what's the law doing about it? Let's get after them ourselves. Stay Come on. on. Willie, Willie, they're after you. They're coming towards the house. They're coming after the pair of you. Listen. What do we do, Willie? <laughs> It's all up with us. They're close by. The warehouse. We can hide there. Oh, but not me. You stay here, woman. No. They'll turn and run at the sight of your no. ugly face. No! Don't leave me! You coward! You just give up and go on! <laughs>
A common willy? Uh, just shows you could never trust a woman. They've arrested Burke and Hare. In the case of the Crown versus William Burke, call the first witness for the prosecution. Call William Hare. William Hare. <laughs> Silence in court. Place your hand on the Bible. Do you solemnly swear to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? Oh, that I do, Your Honor. There's Tom King's evidence! What is Tom King's evidence? In the trial of the Crown versus William Burke, the verdict has been reached. Knox, no charge! Dr. Knox, no charge! Save! But why should that old scoundrel get away free as air? No one will tell you what was going on. There's me, one of them deserves to live. And as for hair, they never did an honest day's work in their lives. At the very least, Knox should be put behind bars! He's as guilty as either of them. Now, if anyone else has anything to say against Knox, he'd better tell me now. Seated, please. Keep your seats. The subject of this morning's lecture, gentlemen, is neurology. It's 
a curse on Dr. Knox, I'm thinking, Father. Do you know he never paid us for the last subject we brought him? Now you must make an act of contrition, my son. Ah, that's none of my business, Father. But if he paid us for the subject like an honest man, I'd be standing here in a decent pair of trousers, meeting the public as I am for the first time. Miserato, No charges against you, Mr. Hare. You're free to go. The mob. They'll be waiting for me. You can go out the back way. Will you send someone with me? Aye. As far as the door. Get the coat round the back for you. It would only take a few minutes longer. And keep the medical counsel waiting, Davy. That would be unforgivable. Oh, I beg of you not to go out there. It's Jeffrey. Take care of her, Mitchell. at his heels, he's bound to fall. In a few minutes, he faces the medical council, doctors who for years have tried to destroy him. And he hasn't got a friend who'll raise a finger to help him. This is not a court of law, Dr. Knox. The medical council is concerned only with the honor of our profession. Have you nothing to say? Nothing. You are my judges, gentlemen. 
This is a heaven-sent opportunity. Make the most of it. Chairman, gentlemen, I don't think we require your presence, Dr. Mitchell. I feel there is something you ought to hear, sir. Very well. Gentlemen, I haven't come here to, to defend Dr. Knox, and I'm not going to plead for him. We have all traded in death. Bodies snatched from the grave, bodies taken from coffins before they went into the grave. In all the years of your experience, can you deny that doubt has ever entered your minds? As to what, Dr. Mitchell? As to the cause of death. This is a scandalous implication. It is more than that. It is an accusation. We are the students of Hippocrates, but some of us are hypocrites. Look into your hearts and seek the truth. And then, then if you condemn Dr. Knox, ask yourselves whether or not you condemn each other and the entire medical profession. Dr. Mitchell, well, I, I demand that you retract that statement. I'm sorry. I haven't any money with me. If you want to come to my house, I'll give you some there. No, thank you. You might send me to Dr. Knox. How glad I am to see you. I thought I'd never see you again. And why? Because of the mob. Death to Dr. Knox. They've been shouting it all night. So you didn't expect me to return in one piece? Or perhaps as a subject for my dissecting table? I've only been walking, Martha. All night? All night. Excellent for the constitution. And most edifying for the soul. The soul? Oh, yes. I admit its existence. We are not <sighs> demigods, Martha. As a child, I believed in God and the devil. It took a child to show me what I am now. I failed, Martha. Oh, no. Yes, I failed. Oh, I don't care what they say about me. I've listened to the... Screams of the mob and the howls of deprecation from the medical council. Bloodlust and hatred. I bracket my colleagues with the rest. I despise them all. Everyone? Until this morning, yes. But I've just heard the voice of conscience. From a small child, I heard the truth. And what did the voice of conscience say? It said... You are an ogre, Dr. Knox. You have killed humanity. For the sake of humanity. For the sake of achievement, ambition. Those bits of clay, poor lumps of humanity that Burke and Hare brought in. I have to confess to you, Martha. They seem so small in my scheme of things. But I knew how they died.
They've reached their decision. You are exonerated. So, they've decided to let the world judge me. Very courageous of them. It is time for my lecture. I have never missed a lecture, Mitchell. No, sir. It'll be quite a new experience, talking to empty walls. Well, at least they won't criticize me. Thank you, darling. Seated, gentlemen. Before commencing this morning's lecture, let us consider the oath of Hippocrates, the sacred oath of our profession. I will prescribe regimen for the good of my patients, according to my ability and my judgment, and never do harm to anyone.